Well, thanks for the introduction. Thank you guys for coming. Friday afternoon, maybe there's nothing better to do in Frisco, I don't know. <laughs> well, let's talk about MCP, but before that, you're probably wondering, who is this guy? Why should I listen to him? It's a very good question. A little bit of background about me. I was a grad student at UTD where I was getting my physics PhD back in 2018. Research I did was, you can describe it as applied AI research. Then when I graduated, I went and worked at Toyota down the street. I was a data scientist there. But after a year, I went on on my own to be an entrepreneur, which means a lot of different things. So during that time, I did a bit of AI consulting, posted a lot of content. So maybe you guys have seen me on YouTube if you're really into AI. And then I now have a class that I teach called the AI Builders Bootcamp. And I've tried my hat at AI product development and have had one whopping customer in that time. Let's talk about MCP. It seems like you guys have, there have been a few sessions on MCP so far today. Maybe what'll be a little different about this talk is that we're gonna actually implement a MCP server from scratch using Python. As so just a little bit of background, what is MCP? A lot of people are talking about it today. It's just a standard way that you can give tools and context to large language models. Anthropic calls it the USB-C port of AI applications. Just like how I can take my laptop and plug all different types of accessories to it using USB-C. I can plug my phone to it, maybe this clicker, whatever it is. You can think of an AI app as my laptop and MCP is what allows us to connect all different types of tools to that central application. So for example, if you have an AI app like Cloud Desktop, you can connect a Slack integration to it or a Google Drive integration or a Gmail integration. There's some benefits to this. You can have custom integrations to your favorite AI apps. Cloud Desktop, you can connect Slack to it and Google Drive. So maybe you have some context on Google Drive and you want Cloud to be able to read that context. And then you wanna make some kind of announcement or send some kind of message in a Slack channel. Or maybe you have some standard tool set. You know, you're really into AI coding and there are all these special prompts that you've developed, different code bases you wanna connect the LLM to, you can just take this tool set and port it to your favorite AI development app. So whether that's Cursor or Windsurf or VS Code. And then finally, if you're a developer, you have your shiny AI app and you want to create more value with it, you can just add an MCP client to your shiny app and just out of the box, you'll increase the app value. That's the what and why of MCP. But how does this work? MCP is very much like an API. It follows this client server architecture which is kind of like if you go to a coffee shop and you're kind of like the client and then the barista is kind of like a server. So you go to the barista and you make a request like, hey, can I get a pumpkin spice latte? And then the barista will say, yeah, you got it. And she'll give you the pumpkin spice latte. And this is very much how MCP works. So you have MCP clients and MCP servers and the request you'll send to an MCP server is something like, hey, what tools do you have? And the MCP server will send you back a response with all the tools that it has available. And so let's talk a bit more about these two key components components. First, I'll talk about the client. The MCP client is built into the AI applications. And this is what sends requests to the MCP server. Here, for example, we have an AI app like Cloud Desktop. And actually inside of Cloud Desktop is a MCP server. So that is what is interacting with the large language model. And then the client is what talks to the server. It can actually talk to multiple servers. So you might have a server for Slack. You might have a server for Google Drive. You might have a server for Notion. Pull context from Google Drive, pull context from Notion, and send messages in Slack, all using the large language model. Here's some of the things that the client is responsible for. It can discover server capabilities. You have the server, but you don't really know what it does. It can list all the tools for you. You can ask it to you know, list all the prompts and all the other things the server is capable of. You can also receive data from the server. Maybe the server has access to a database or a file system. So the client is responsible for taking that data and giving it to the large language model. And then finally, managing the tool execution, because large language models can't actually run Python code themselves. They can definitely write Python code, but in order to run it, you're gonna need some other process to handle that. And then the other side of this is the MCP server. The server listens for requests from the MCP clients and responds accordingly. Again, here's our picture of Cloud Desktop with the MCP server. So the server can have things in it like prompt templates. So let's say you have some really good instructions that work really well for finding bugs in your code. It can have access to resources, so maybe you want to connect the LLM to a database and give it some additional context there. Finally, you have tools, which is what probably the main use case 
of MCP servers is, uh, which could be like functions, API calls, image processing, basically anything you can implement in Python that takes an input and spits out an output, you can implement it as a tool in an MCP server. And then a couple other things. So the transport is just how the client and the server talk to each other. This can be all done locally on your laptop, like we'll see in a second here, or you can use HTTP. For example, instead of running the server on your laptop, it might be hosted in the cloud somewhere and some business like Notion has their MCP server set up and you can make requests to that, just like you would an API. I've been talking about conceptual stuff, so hopefully that lays a nice foundation. Now let's go into a concrete example. So here, I'm gonna build a YouTube MCP server from scratch with Python, and even though this might sound like very scary and technical, it is actually super simple. This is what the end system is gonna do. That's me, I'm gonna talk to a large language model, and the large language model is gonna have access to this MCP server, which is gonna have like prompt templates, access to all my YouTube videos, and a tool to extract a transcript from any YouTube video. This is gonna be capable of doing things like returning relevant videos to an input query, extracting transcripts, creating chapters for a YouTube video automatically, and writing blog posts. But this isn't just gonna be an LLM, we're gonna integrate this into Claude Desktop and see how this actually works. Maybe I'll just pause briefly if anyone had any questions. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that's a really good question. So we'll see what the details of this look like, but basically when you develop these servers, it's just gonna be a bunch of Python code. Well, they're specifically gonna be Python functions as we'll see, and you can write doc strings for your Python functions, and then that's gonna be the description that gets passed to the LLM. So the LLM actually knows what to do with that specific tool. I think there's another question over here. So my understanding of that is basically if you want to host a server remotely and you don't want the server and the client to be running on the same machine, that's when you want to use the HTTP with the server side events. I guess that's where my expertise ends. I can share some resources more on uh, the transport mechanism. This will be the last question and then we'll go on to the demo. Oh, okay, so I guess that's one of the things this uh, has changed in the last two months <laughs> since I made these slides. So that's a good call out. Okay, let's keep going. Here are the steps we're gonna follow. We're gonna install UV. If you're not familiar with UV, it's just a Python package manager that's super fast and then also make this process a lot easier. Then we'll create our MCP server. And we're gonna add prompts, resources, and tools to it. Then we'll set up our local transport and then we'll plug our server into Claude Desktop. So first step, install UV. This is super simple. UV is an extremely fast Python package manager and you can install it with one line on Mac, Linux, and Windows. I've already done this, so we don't have to do this right now. Does someone want a picture of it? Yeah, you can just search UV and you'll be able to find this stuff pretty easily. Next, we can create our server. We're gonna import some things in Python. So we're gonna import the official MCP module from Anthropic. We're specifically importing this fast MCP class. That's what's gonna help us build the MCP server. Then I'm gonna import this Python library that'll help us get the YouTube video transcripts. And then a couple other things. So CSV to parse CSV files and read to do some regular expressions. And with one line of code, we can make our MCP server. So <laughs> fast MCP and then just whatever you want to call it, just plug it into that object. Now let's add some prompts. If it's a prompt, a resource, or a tool, it doesn't matter. You're going to create it using a Python function. So we're going to do this def and then we'll have our doc string. So this is how the LLM is going to know what these instructions are for. And all I'm doing is I'm reading a markdown file from the local directory. This is a markdown file with with very clear instructions on how to create video chapters for a YouTube video based on its transcript. In the project directory, there's gonna be a folder called prompts. I'm gonna have two markdown files in there. One's called createchapters.md, another one's called writeblog.md. There's actually gonna be two of these. So I have these two prompts that the server is gonna make available to the large language model, and this is gonna come in handy later on. Next thing we do is add a resource. So we're gonna do this in a very similar way. I've got, I guess the code's kinda small here, but basically what I'm doing, I have a CSV file that's full of all the videos on my YouTube channel, and I'm gonna just extract the information from that CSV file and format it in Markdown and then return that formatted Markdown table. So it's easier to parse for the large language model. And again, this is just a Python function and the magic is we're adding this decorator to it. So before we had mcp.prompt, now we have mcp.resource and then we have a URI. So this is kind of like how the LLM can access this resource. And then again, we just have this CSV file sitting in a folder called resources in the 
project directory. This is what the head of the CSV file looks like. So I got a video ID, I got a date time, and I got a title for the YouTube video. Now we can uh, add the tool. So again, the, the font's kind of small and the function's kind of long, but one important note here is notice how long this doc string is. So it's better to give more details because this is how the LLM is going to know what to do with this function. So I have a description, the args, the returns, just so you know the LLM has the context. This is just some like basic logic. So given some YouTube video link, it's going to extract the video ID. And that's necessary because the Python library I'm using to extract the transcripts takes in a video ID. It doesn't take in a URL. And then all this is just formatting the transcript to add like a timestamp before each line of the transcript. Again, we can do local transport and this is super easy. mcp.run transport sdio. We could also do the, well, I guess they changed it from the server side events, but you can just specify whatever transport you want to use. Now we can integrate this into Claude Desktop. If we go to Claude Desktop, it's just super simple. You just go to settings, developer, edit config, and then it's going to open up a JSON file. You can imagine this is a command we're going to type into the terminal or the command line. So this is like the full path to my UV, and then this is the path to the MCP server source code. So I've got it in this repos slash YouTube MCP. And basically you can imagine that when Claude spins up, when you spin up the app, it's just going to execute this command at the command line and it's going to be running the server as a sub process. So you don't have to worry about running that yourself. Claude desktop is going to handle the whole thing. So let's look at a demo. If we go, as I said, to settings, developer, and we already see that we have something here, but if we click edit config and we open this up, we'll have our JSON file. I guess I put it in a different directory, put it in my downloads directory. So this is where the code is sitting. And then this is the path to my global UV. This is just one MCP server. We could go grab MCP servers from the web or something, and then we can just paste them into this config file and we can use those as well. So we can use this thing. Different apps will use the prompts, resources, and tools in different ways. So in Claude desktop, the prompts and the resources, you have to manually select which ones you want to give to the LLM. So let's see, I have this YouTube library thing and I'll say something like, I'm looking for videos on MCP. And then we'll see what Claude says about that. Okay, so I see from your video library, you have one specifically about MCP. MCP explained in 20 minutes. Okay, so that's cool. So we can do something like create chapter timestamps for this. All right, let's see what it does. So notice like I didn't give it explicit instructions on how to write chapter timestamps or did I tell it explicitly to use the transcript tool, but it kind of knew to call fetch YouTube transcript and now it's writing out the timestamps for it in this view. So just skimming this, actually let's go, let's see if we can click on this link and we can compare it to the real ones. Okay, so these are the real ones. I'll just copy this, bring it over here so we can compare side by side. Zero, zero is the same. What is MCP? Claude said 27 seconds is when this one starts, but the real one was at 19 seconds. So we can already see there's some discrepancy between it. Let's see, benefits. Comparing this to the real timestamps, Claude isn't doing a great job. Or is doing a better job? It's possible. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Let's try something though. Let me go here and let me add the create chapter instructions as context. And I'll say something like, these weren't quite right. Can you try again with instructions? Oh, come on. So Claude loves to limit your context length. Let's open up a new chat and try. So someone memorized this, uh, these timestamps real quick and then we'll try again. Actually, let me just grab this. So let me grab the link. I'll paste it here and then I'll add the chapter instructions. Please create chapter timestamps for this. Yeah, I haven't tried this with any like small models. It's really easy to plug an MCP server to a Claude desktop. So that's why I did that here. Now it's doing stuff. Okay, it looks even worse. <laughs> yeah, let's see. You didn't get the, what is MCP, how MCP works. Okay, that was actually right on the money. 234, MCP client, that one's pretty good too. MCP server, that's pretty close. I feel like it did a little bit better of a job. Maybe not so much on that first one, but it's adding. I typically don't have too many chapters. I try to minimize it, but. 
And then another cool thing we can do is can you create links to these? Because YouTube has like standard way they do the links. This should do a pretty good job. Let's open this link. I think that did a pretty good job building custom MCP server. And it looks like it started right at the right time. Let's go back to the slides here. Well, that's basically it. Happy to take any questions you guys have on MCP or whatever. Yeah, go What's ahead. Your slides for this? So the slides, there's actually a GitHub repo here. GitHub Shaheen T YT dash MCP. So the slides are there. Also, I sent the slides to the organizers. So you'll be able to get it from them. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Have you considered like automatizing that? that is automated, so I like took that from another piece of code, but I wanted to keep the demo like really simple. This is something you could automate very easily. I had one version of this where I have an API like running on Google Cloud that is a semantic search system for all my YouTube videos. And I was like integrating that into this demo, but then I was like, okay, this is getting way too complicated. I want people to, I want all the code to fit on the slides. So that's why I didn't do it. But yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, go ahead. The great thing about YouTube is that they generate the transcripts automatically, so you can just grab that. If the transcripts aren't something you can just grab, you're gonna have to use Whisper or something to generate the transcripts. It's just gonna be a bit slower, but you can definitely do that. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Check out Olama. Maybe you're already using it. Olama's great. And then beyond that, the Hugging Face Hub has maybe a million models at this point. Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. What's the advantage of using MCP? Yeah, so if you're just building a single use case, then it's not that big of a deal and you're implementing all the functions yourself. One of the key upsides of MCP is you can build the tool set once and then let's say you're using OpenAI's Agents SDK for your initial implementation, but then you wanna move over to LangChain for some reason. Now you can just take your MCP server and just plug it into your LangChain system instead of having to re-implement all the functions and all that hard work using LangChain's syntax. Another upside of MCP servers is that other people are building MCP servers. So not in this example, but I have a video coming out on Sunday where I built a Notion agent and Notion has an MCP server that you can just take off the shelf. So in like much less time than I made this demo, <laughs> I was able to make a Notion agent because I could just use their MCP server. Can you do the same thing? So you can go to Notion's API and then implement custom functions yourself. It's just gonna take longer because you gotta read through Notion's docs, you gotta understand how their API works, you gotta implement everything in Python, and then you gotta set up authentication and all that kind of stuff. You can definitely do it, it's just gonna take longer. Notion made the MCP server. So it's like a basically just as good as their API, but it's specifically for large language models. Yeah. How good are you in MCP? What's that? How good are you in MCP? I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. I haven't heard of that one. Maybe we can try and build something. Yeah, sure. All right. Well, let's see how we're doing on time. If you guys don't have any more questions, oh yeah, go ahead. Is it the same concept? So it's really like one. Yeah, so at the end of the day, everything is a function, but adding the label of prompt, resource, or tool, it'll just get treated differently depending on that specific client implementation. For example, we saw here with uh, Claude, tools can be called automatically. I didn't have to tell it to do use the fetch transcript tool. The model just did it on its own, but it doesn't know to use the create chapters instructions or YT library resource on its own. So that's specific to Claude MCP client, but different MCP clients might also automatically fetch prompts and fetch resources. Depending on the MCP client you're using, the uh, prompts, the resources, and the tools are treated differently. But at the end of the day, they're all Python functions. What kind of you can do any kind of object, any type of data you can process in Python, you can pass to your MCP server. So basically you can have an image object. If you have a tool that does some kind of image processing or image classification, you can just give that tool, include that in your MCP server, have some kind of process for handling images, and then they can spit out a classification, pass that to the LLM. So basically anything you can implement in Python, you can build into your MCP server. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, of course. So they have SDKs for all the different major languages, but Python is the native tongue of AI, so <laughs> that's what I went with here. Yeah, maybe one last question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so agent to agent is a bit different. So MCP, you can think of that as helpful for building a single agent, but then you can imagine as more people start building agents and they are specialized in different things, there needs to be some kind of protocol for you know information passing or something like that. That's where A to A is potentially more helpful, but I feel like it's still pretty early <laughs> for multi-agent systems.
I would view them as different categories because they're doing fundamentally different things. MCP gives tools and context to a specific LLM. A to A is just a communication protocol between separate agents, so LLMs with tools. You have multiple systems like this and then they can talk to each other with A to A. Well, thanks for all the questions. Thank you guys for your time. If you guys want to connect on LinkedIn, happy to do it. Just mention the workshop because I get a lot of connection requests, so I don't want to miss your request. All right, thank you.